Ram Dust, man. What a cliche. What, what a dude. Mm hmm. Well, dude. Yeah, he's <laughs> my number one, man. Oh, Ram yeah. Dust is uh, something about him. Something about him. He was a prophet. He's my mm. number one teacher. If there was just one person I could say helped me on this path that I never even met, it's Ram Dass. It's so, because it's so simple in the way that he explains things. I've actually got a really interesting question for us, man. Have you mm -hmm. been able to experience where, uh, and I'd, I'd love to hear if you've had experience with this, man. Have you, have you had uh, experiences where you're able to see that even Ram Dass is but a figment of your consciousness? <laughs> Huh. What do you mean by that? Can you go into that a little more? Of course, man. I think it does need a bit of explanation. So by virtue of the fact that we haven't met Ram Dass and that he exists as an idea in our mind, it could, oh. it could lead us to question, man, is is, 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 is the idea of Ram Dass just consciousness? <laughs> you know, this is the kind of way I have to think. Wow. Mm, yeah. It's, it's pretty deep stuff. But I just I, want to throw it there, man. I, I know what you it, mean. Yeah. And I think his, I do believe he was a real person. But I think his transmission and resonance is so powerful, it doesn't matter. It's kind of like the story of Jesus. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if he actually got crucified or existed or not, or if he was an actual historical figure. His life was the lesson. And Ram Dass's life was the lesson. You know, and that extends to Maharaji and Karoli Baba. Like their lives and their story were the lesson for us. So if they were an actual physical person that I could have touched or not, doesn't matter. It's really just about, it's just about their presence here. And that may even be more of what they are. We think of people, right? I think of you and your person in your body, but what if what we are is like our story that we present mm -hmm. and we give to the world that outlasts us. Maybe that's really why Ram Das was so resonant to me because it's not about me meeting him. It's about just like what he presented to the world. And that might be more real than real, if that makes sense. So does that answer your question? Well, you are Ram Das. <laughs> you are Ram Das, dude. There's nothing in your experience which doesn't suggest that you are not Ram Das because you are, because you are like, you're the same mind. You're the same mind with a capital M. You're, you're the same consciousness. Like one of the trippiest insights I had when, when I've had really interesting awakenings, which is, wow, it's the same consciousness. It's the yeah. same. Arana Mahashi, is, your, your being is, the, is his being. It's the same damn thing. And if you get, re, you know, some of my deepest awakenings have been around, it, it, it's just you. That's you know, pretty powerful. Just, oh, man. This is like, this is where you think like, like it, it gets it, this is what i meant about it goes so much deeper than you think <laughs> yeah i think that's Man. the purpose of the true guru is they're not meant to be like bow down to me they're meant to reflect mm -hmm. that and show you that in you that's the transmission to show you that they are essentially you like ramana maharshi he didn't care about having followers and ramdas didn't care about having followers obviously they did and they were extremely popular but they were popular because of what they were showing in others or to others. Yeah, man, that's, uh, that's the true guru. And anybody that calls himself a guru and says, you need me run the other way. That's not yeah. what it's about. That's not the teaching. I um, think it's yeah. maybe, I, I feel like you probably know this one because I, I sense you're very into the Buddha and Lao Tzu and things like that. But mm -hmm. uh, I think that, I think there's a quote, which is something like, if you see the Buddha on the, on the road, yeah. kill him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I always like to say, if Jesus came back, he would never proclaim that he was back. You wouldn't even know who he was, but you, there would be a resonance in, in the words of Jesus. And I'm not even, I'm just using him as an example because we all know Jesus, but any ascended master never proclaims that they're a teacher. I feel like a teacher never says I'm a teacher. Um, for the most part, I mean, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's obviously a huge generalization, but I feel as though a true teacher just embodies their teaching and that's it. That's all they need. They're just here existing. Like they're just with us and they're not trying to get anything out of anybody else by them being them. If that makes sense. Like they're not looking for followers, even though they will get followers, probably if they're a good teacher. They're not looking to, to like snake oil people and get their money out of their teachings. You know, like a mm -hmm. true teacher, a true, like a, a master man. A true master is just kind of like an offering in their lifestyle and they're just here 
they're just here for a little bit and um they grace us with their presence and teaching just by their life just how they live that's the true guru in my sense damn damn that's awesome i i, I totally resonate with that idea that right. the, the ultimate awakened being the ascended master they are com just completely probably quiet because they don't need to fucking say anything <laughs> yeah yeah they are heard stories to, of that Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 please go. I've heard stories of that, like Ramana Maharshi, there would be a lot of times where he would just be sitting with his followers and not saying a word. And that to me, that is a teaching. That that means so much more than having this hour long spiel about awakening and life and non dualism. That to just be able to sit with somebody in silence, that just means something, man. And just that is a, that is a lesson in itself. And maybe that's why Ramana was so advanced. Like he just saw that he saw past, uh, how do I put this? Yeah. He saw past the, like the phenomenal aspect of teaching and just like, like I said, embodied the teaching, like a, a true teacher becomes the teaching. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. like their whole life and story is the teaching like Jesus. He had teachings for sure. He had good quotes, good quotes for days, but his life is the teaching like his, what happened in his life made him the Messiah among any, many other teachers. But with that element, with that aspect of looking at teachers, it's a different way than um, just what they say. When you look at their lifestyle and their whole entire story, the, the Dharma that they truly embody, that's what really makes a teacher in my mind. Yeah, man, that's I hear just that. Me, that's just no, me. no, no, brother, <laughs> I so well because, you know, you can, you can just, tell by the subtlety of, of of their presence and and i think just basic indications like their, their lifestyle and what's yeah. you know what's really really a mindfuck though is that despite that and i actually totally feel that man despite that isn't it funny how there could be someone who is incredibly awake incredibly enlightened and yet they're they're almost playing some sort of weird game with humanity by uh by not appearing as an enlightened person as an awakened person um maybe actually that would be a imagine if they did that that would be a way of getting you to reflect back to yourself oh i must be it this person cannot be it i must it must be within it cannot be out, out outside of myself mm. that's just a thought randomly had them so could you give me an example because i'm a little no, no, yeah. So um, imagine, for example, you see, like, I think uh, there are some spiritual teachers that are not necessarily developed in other areas, for example, socially or, or personally, or to do with perhaps even ethically, although they have the understanding, they just don't apply it or embody it, but they do have it. Um, that's an interesting one. I'm, I don't know. I got <laughs> I don't you. Know so they don't look that, like but. a cliche teacher or a yogi what you're saying mm. like they don't when you think of a, a a master like he's not in the meditative pose he doesn't do the ohms a few times a day he doesn't even speak in that that certain kind of yogic philosophy um but you're saying that you could still be a teacher and not look like a teacher is that what you're getting at i said maybe i i suppose the idea came to my mind and the and the the purpose of that from my perspective would be if that if that was occurring what that would re reinforce is the need for you to go within because it can't be like uh -huh. if, it, if it's being confirmed oh, they, i got gotcha. you yeah. you know it's almost like you know the, the appearance is saying oh it's just it's it's deflecting back at you hey man it's not me it must be then it's yeah. almost like if you have a bunch of crappy people around like oh man where, what is, yeah. what is here? you go in to, inside you 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 awaken now these people are not crappy people now these yeah. people are yeah, man, that's actually very true, too. I feel as though I've had this thought before that a lot of the quote gurus of the 20th century that people came to um, enamor had controversies surrounding like sexual assault and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I feel as though this is kind of weird to say, but I feel as though that like that's part of the teaching right even though it may be inadvertent and indirect but i feel as though that's part of the teaching in their lifestyle is that even somebody that you bow down to and you glamorize so much um has folly as well like they're not that they're not the answer the answer is within so yeah i i know exactly what you're saying like somebody that 
yeah, everybody's the guru. I think I said this at the beginning of the podcast. I try to see the guru in everything. So even in the darkest people, even in like the, the downfalls and the follies of humanity, how do I reflect that upon my own being, you know, in my own Buddhahood, you could say. So I know exactly what you mean. Sometimes the teacher could be a teaching that is um, it's behind the scenes. I guess you could say it's kind of shrouded in darkness, but the teaching is still there and it's very subtle. I think mm. I think that's what you're kind of getting at, right? Yeah, no, totally, man. Yeah, thanks for reflecting that back. I, I totally feel that. Yeah. 